from Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering RSA Conference 2017. Now, here's your host, John Furrier. Hello everyone, welcome to theCUBE. We're here live in Palo Alto for special RSA coverage, RSA conference is the, is the big uh, security conference. There's really two of them, RSA and Black Hat. Seem to be the biggest shows that really the top industry players in the security, vendors and customers, and now governments come together and really talk about kind of how the state of the security is and what the solutions are. Our next guest here in the cube is Dave Packer, Vice President of Product and Corporate Marketing at Druva um, on the marketing and on the product side, which is very relevant for today's conversation. Okay. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, great, thanks for having me on board. Thanks for coming down to our office, our studio in Palo Alto. Obviously, there's no room in, uh, in San Francisco. We'll be there for two days. I'll be driving up tonight. But I want to get the vibe of the show before we get into some of the things that you guys are working on, because I think the number one story that I see coming out of this thing is that the threat detection volume right. is at an all-time high. So, and the diversity of the attack vectors Right. AKA and surface area right. is, is at the highest it's ever seen in terms of at least surface area and the number of attacks. Right. Has the industry, one, internalized it? Are we still in denial? And two, is there any movement in any kind of strategy to yeah. respond to this massive threats? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question. I think, you know, what we see, you know, if you, if you look across RSA, I mean, there, there's a lot of different topics, you know, and as technologies have gone over the last few years, you know, IOTs, you know, definitely add an interesting dimension to that, right? You have people who have, on the consumer side, you know, uh, Alexa, Google Home, you know, attached to their locks at their front door, right? And so, you know, do, do, you, do I just need a blow horn down the street to say, hey, Google, unlock the front door, right? And see whose door's unlocked. So, I mean, I think there's interesting questions about kind of what we're opening ourselves up to. Mm -hmm. um, the attack surface has become uh, so varied and, and so broad, right, that um, you now have these distinct domains, right? There's the enterprise side of it, which is really uh, more focused on, you know, devices and workers and users and how they're interacting with data. And then you have the consumer side, which is much more diverse because there's so many products and yet, and I, um, consumers are less attuned to the security vulnerabilities that they're buying into, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I think, you know, where, where it's interesting is, um, you know, what is, you know, what, what are the right tools? What are the right things that people should be doing? And, um, you know, there are a lot of great elements out there on the enterprise side. Um, obviously on the consumer side, it's a lot trickier. Um, but, you know, I think what's, um, you know, where we're seeing things evolve today is how do you, with all these data sources, all these different areas, mm -hmm. how do you get that kind of global visibility? I think it's very difficult when you look through the security yeah. stack and try to figure out where do I interject to make sure I'm helping the business and reducing the risk. There's a couple of things, highlights for me, I would say that I want to get your, your reaction to is mm -hmm. obviously the industry is probably has this now call to arms, if you will. I, no one's actually said it, but you kind of see the teasing out of this. We need a cyber West Point uh, mm -hmm. kind of institutional right. uh, facility. But you also you have the sharing of data is becoming a real call to action. Right. Hey guys, we need to share data as fast as possible. Certainly any kind of new pattern recognition, that's a key algorithm on right. some of the anomaly detections. And we started to see government up there. We saw um, the uh, Chief General Counsel, now the CEO of Microsoft, Brad Smith on stage. But really not a lot of government presence. No one from the Trump administration was there. There was really nobody right. there from government. And this seems to be the black hole in my mind of data sharing because ultimately mm -hmm. the government is a big part of that right. as well. Thoughts and reaction to that? Did I miss it? Was there more government there than than I than I thought? No, I mean I think uh, you raise a you raise a great point. I mean I think that um, there there really is a need uh, today to really uh, start forcing more open sharing. I mean I, th I think when we look at how the attack vectors are coming in and how varied they are, mm -hmm. um, that um, the fact that uh, organizations are still very much like this is happening to me, but I don't. Want to tell anybody because I don't want anybody to really know unless it's something ser super yeah. serious, right? But at the same time, um, it's only the spread of that knowledge. Because um, when you think about security, is you know about people, process, and technology, right? Yeah. And so it's really how do you define the proper people and process practices, uh, and how do you share them in a way so that organizations uh, know um, more ahead of time when they're when they might be some kind of a threat they need to 
to thwart, I guess is yeah. the right way to say it. And um, I think that uh, you hit on a great point because I, I do feel like the government especially uh, is uh, open to a lot of vulnerabilities. We saw that recently. Yeah. Um, how do you take action against that? Yeah, which side are they on? Some people are speculating right. <laughs> both, but it really ultimately it's disappointing that the government really is backing away from RSA when they should be leaning in. Right, exactly. To quote uh, Sheryl Sandberg, even though the government is, you know, not a male or female, it's actually Trump, I guess is male, but we gotta lean in actually with the government. I wanna get your thoughts on uh, other, other commentary. I had a chance to speak with um, Mark McLaughlin, who's the CEO of Palo Alto Networks, uh, the CEO of Checkpoint, and uh, Cisco's top security guy, Intel McAfee guy. I asked him directly, I'm like, guys, the, inter the internet's old. I mean, what, you could say maybe 40 years old. Right. We're talking about technology that's 30 to 40 years old. Right. Mark McLaughlin used to work at uh, Network Solutions, and he ran the registry for the mm -hmm. DNS system. Mm -hmm. And the DNS still is part of the underpinnings. Right. What the hell's going on with the infrastructure? So to me, I think the big elephant in the room, at least from my perspective, was, yeah, the action is moving up to the top of the stack, but the, still the infrastructure is like right. 40 years old. Right. <laughs> I mean, is there any impact to that? Does that help? Does it matter? What's your reaction to that? What's your thoughts? Is it, is it relevant? Is it, is it abstracted away or is it uh, still well, a problem? You know, I think, uh, I think it's uh, all tiers are relevant, right? I mean, uh, at some point we have to, you know, it, it's like any kind of infrastructure, roadways, highways. I mean, you, there's always modernization that yeah. has to happen, right? And evolution of that. Um, you know, I think when you think about security in general, um, you do have to look at all the various uh, all the various layers. And um, I think you know, internet, yeah, 40 years old. Uh, you know, I think there, there's been though a lot of you know maturity in how organizations are transferring mm -hmm. data, how they're interconnecting, how that data is being secured and locked down. Uh, but at the same time, the perimeter is gone. That's right. For sure. The perimeter is gone. The one thing right? we know, even though that old infrastructure, which was managed by lock and key, if you will, metaphorically right. speaking, front door, back door, perimeter, right. right. Now it's gone. Cloud blows that away. Right. Exactly. I mean, this really where is the anomaly is interesting because now you have the the patterns. So, right. I mean, talk about it from your perspective, Drew. You guys are doing a lot in this area. You talk to a lot of customers in the real world who are actually mm -hmm. living and breathing this. Right. We're seeing ransomware exploding and fake ransomware. All kinds of malware burying themselves into these older infrastructure pockets, exploits or whatever. So, right, right. So this is an issue. So what's the reality? When you talk to your customers and the right. products that you guys are making, what's the key thing that's going on? Well, you know, first off, when you think about Druva, what we're doing is we're collecting information basically from all these different data sources, from mobile devices, servers, uh, cloud applications. We're bringing it together and what we're doing is we're analyzing that data as we bring it into our system. Um, what we've done is we've now applied a layer of machine learning on top of that to, uh, if you think about an enterprise, you've got 50,000 users, 60,000 yeah. users. How do you really identify where there's a potential ransomware attack, right? Common theme is somebody gets attacked, they don't report it, right? They <laughs> try to figure it out themselves, pay with their credit card, whatever yeah, that is. They're embarrassed, right? whatever. Right, whatever. And But at the same time, it's corporate information. Well, it's also happens. timely, too. A lot of the ransomware is really orchestrated and targeted. Right. So they know the pressure point. Right. And so it literally is a gun to the head, so yeah. to speak. And so, you know, w w the way we're looking at it is from the standpoint of giving people the ability to have early awareness of when there is an attack, right? Uh, we kind of think of it as we're like the second line of defense. Your first line of uh, defense is your malware, right? Which is your malware detection, right? Which is really looking at what's coming in, what people are putting on their machines, et cetera. But we also know that the r ransomware right now is evolving so rapidly and it's being tuned to work around these systems Systems, that you need to, that second line of defense to really look at, you know, where are there changes out in my network, right? And so what we do is we take these snapshots up to a, a tolerance of every few minutes, right, to be able to say where are changes, where are things that look like, uh, for example, uh, a large volume of files being encrypted. Um, and if we see that, then identifying that for IT, alerting them so that they can take action on it directly. Um, but you could also use the same technology for looking for things that are other anomalous or malicious activities, like uh, a rogue employee that's about to quit who deletes a lot of information, mm -hmm. right? Um, 
and uh, or uh, somebody who's downloading tons of information suddenly, right? Yeah. Which might be indicative indicative of the same thing. Somebody leaving the organization. Here's some interesting stories. I'm just pulling up our SiliconANGLE newsroom yep. here. Uh, one story came from uh, Tech Republic. New ransomware could poison your town's water supply. Right, I saw before that. Before yeah. you don't pay up, and it's researchers from Georgia Tech, great right. school, have a new form of ransomware targeting uh, industrial systems. This is the IoT challenge, right, right. things that essentially could simulate a disruption to the water treatment plant. Right, right. So, I mean, that's severe. That's everyday life. I mean, right, people drink right. water, right? Right. And then the other one here, I um, love this story from Microsoft, where uh, kind of a, an impar strategic imperative: the need for a digital Geneva Convention. Mm -hmm. right. So this brings back a couple different points, right? The, the one is IoT, Internet of Things, is industrial things right. that we live every day with roads, cars, right. uh, water treatment plants, nuclear power, all this stuff. To policy, right? How do we resolve it? So you guys have a, a business; people buy your services, but they, the other customers, might not have you guys. They might have another product, right? Is there sharing going on right now in the industry? Or is it more of you know, don't ask, don't help, secret clubhouse? You know, you know, the, there is some sharing, but you know, I, I suppose this is uh, you know, w one of the things about technology and proprietary and building out your systems and solutions, right? You're you're creating new technology, you're inventing, right? And part of that is like, you know, hey, I've got something that's patentable. I want to be able to take that to the broader market. I think there are some things that uh, exist today that will create those barriers because of the way that organizations look at what they're creating from a technology standpoint to address that, right? So if I come up with some, some new algorithm that's going to help stamp out ransomware, I'm probably less inclined to share that right away, right? Or yeah. explain it right away. Um, I think where that's where you get back to your initial comment, you know, what can the government be doing to uh, provide a more broader uh, uh, industry kind of governing uh, committee or something that helps businesses to better kind of figure out what are the ways that these things can be shared and still protect organizations at And the this same is a time. tricky challenge. Open source has proven that open creates better security and then closed, right. as we know. So I like this, I love the trend of open data, and mm -hmm. I think that's interesting. Not yet practiced, so I think it's going to be incumbent upon people sharing. A right. uh, question about your business. Why are people buying you guys? I mean, what's the, what's the value proposition for you guys? What's the buyer um, sales motion? What's the value proposition? Why you guys, and what specific use cases do you guys hit, hit the home run at? Yeah, so we're, uh, we come in as we're really about providing cloud information management. Right. It's about uh, how do you, in, in this new world of data being spread everywhere, mm -hmm. how do you uh, institute the proper stewardship of your information and provide the right tools on that when those tools that are strictly on premises or wherever just can't do that anymore. They fall short. So we look at it from, you know, we can leverage the cloud and the beauty of the infinite capacity and elasticity uh, to, you know, do search indexes across petabyte bytes of data, help you search through that, sift through, find, and, you know, a great example from a security and privacy standpoint is uh, take something like GDPR in the EU, right? How do you know who has what type of information on their devices, right? I mean, part What's of- What's GDPR? Uh, that's the General Data Protection Act. Okay, that's regulation, so the, the right? countries have their own little Right, sovereignty. so the EU is kind of agreed, right? Yeah. The 18 member states have agreed that, you know, uh, these are the policies we're going to have now. Right. And it's, uh, it's- That's really for consumer protection, right? That kind of thing? It's uh, protection for its privacy protection. Got so it. it affects consumers or employees or anybody pretty much. And anybody who's doing business in the EU is impacted by that, right? So it's not just you and the So there's you. a lot of management and getting the auditing right. and the numbers, tracking things right. to know what's... Right, so companies are now uh, in the U.S. spending you know, millions of dollars to get aligned to that, right? But the, the question at the end of the day is, um, is what, where are my real risk pools, right? You know, if somebody loses a laptop and it's got marketing data on it, you know, I might not be too worried about that, right? But if I've got a financial advisor who's out there doing work and suddenly his laptop's breached or is stolen, you know, how do you know what's on there? Right, because at the end of the day, it can result yeah. in a breach notification. Well, I have to show that I did everything in good faith, or I'm going to have some huge penalty levied against yeah, me. Yeah. So it's the same. It's risk management meets, you know, protecting. Too, right, 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 exactly. Balancing both sides. So those are the problems that we're helping businesses. And ransomware is right at your wheelhouse then too. So that's right. where it hits you guys. Right. What's the impact of this? Is it real ransomware? Right. Is exactly. it backed up? Do we have alternatives? Exactly. Do we have to pay up? In most right. cases, people paying up. Right. All right. So a final question. Give, tell us a cool story. 
good, bad, or ugly around a real life situation. And you don't have to talk about the customer's name because because um, it's usually, if it's good, it's juicy. But that was a <laughs> juicy story of a customer that didn't have the kind of protection they needed and one that did and what happened. Yeah, you know, actually it's interesting. Um, what, what I find is that uh, if you kind of go through the who's who's list of my customers, they're usually companies that are post breach. So uh, and, and what you'll find is that, you know, I won't name them, but large healthcare companies, whatever, who, um, you know, something was compromised. Maybe it was a laptop or something. And, you know, not a customer, but, you know, you can look at like Advocate Healthcare in Chicago that was levied a $5 million fine back in August, right, by uh, Health and Human Services for HIPAA violation. You know, where those organizations, wow. you know, what happens is, is they pay out all this money. The CIO loses their job. The CISO loses their job somebody loses their job, right? And next thing you know, they've got to bring in consultants to help them realign all their data practices. God, so right. and, bring the consultants in. Yeah, right, it's Damn. super it's expensive, like, right? So maybe not efficient, they're milking it all the way. Right. Right, and so you know what's unfortunate is that companies, you know, there's one thing that's a breach. There's another thing like all the the post breach stuff that you have to do to align and, and show the government, hey, I'm doing the right things, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so we get a large volume of those types of companies coming to us and saying, hey, we need better a better way to manage the data, understand what's there, how to understand what our security posture is, understand yeah. the data streams, who has what, who shouldn't have stuff. We have customers that. Uh, we have one customer in particular, unfortunately, who, who's had um, information theft that has very large security implications. And, um, you know, the reason they came to us was how do, we, how do we get our arms around this in a way so we know, you know. When All right, somebody... Dave, bottom line, mm -hmm. um, great show. Give us the bumper sticker. What's the real aha from this, this week, this year, RSA uh, 2017? What's the big story? What's the, in your mind? Well, I think what we're really starting to see now is that because of the sheer volume of things, things like knowledge management are starting to be applied to this area more strongly. Um, I still think there's a lot of noise there. It still needs a lot of maturity. But um, we see that as actually providing a way to have companies gain insights. Talking about machine learning, AI, these kinds of things. Right, right. Uh, insights across large volumes of data, right? And ultimately, at the end of the day, you start, you start surpassing the human capacity to look at all that and say, oh, this is is a problem, this isn't a problem, right? So how do you leverage that? You know, if you can drive a car down the street using AI, you know, how come you can't start utilizing and applying it to these data sets and correlate across various data sets to find the various threats? Um, get closer to, instead of finding out three weeks later, getting closer to finding it within the it was zero day, so. Great, more exploits, more problems, more complexity, but Automation machine learning is coming fast. Right. Dave Packer here inside the Cube, breaking down the RSA coverage and analysis and great commentary reaction here inside the Cube. We'll be right back with more action live here in Palo Alto on RSA 2017 after this short break. <laughs>